Hello and welcome to Module 6, the Network Address Translation for IPv4. All right, um, please don't forget to take your notes and submit them when you are done. All right, so um, let's talk about the NAT char characteristics. So when we talk about NAT, there are private addresses that uh, you should know about. Of course, you probably... Oh, well, not probably you already know about the internal network private IPv4 addresses space. Um, private IP addresses cannot be routed over the internet. The network address translation protocol, uh, which sits on the router, will translate private IP addresses to public to allow access to the internet. It it allows the conference conservation of public IPv4 addresses. So please write this down. Any IP address that starts with 10, and it doesn't matter what the, th the last three numbers are, anything that starts with 172.16 to 172.31, and it doesn't matter what the last two bytes are, and anything that starts with 192, 168, and it doesn't matter what the last two bytes are, then that those are private IP addresses, and usually, an administrator inside the network will just pick any block of any of these block of addresses and configure their network accordingly and doesn't have to worry about the IETF or anyone else that they have to purchase or anything uh, IP addresses or anything like that. So in addition to conserving IP addresses, uh, you can uh, if you changed, for example, ISPs, your the ISPs only give you the public IP addresses that you place on the router. And your design of your LAN internally, all your configurations of your IP addresses doesn't have to be changed. All you have to do is just get the public IP addresses and put them on your router, tell, tell NAT what those public IP addresses are, and then you are good to go. You don't have to worry about a thing. All right, so the way it works is the following. You have a private IP address. When you go out, you want to get on the internet, you send your router to NAT. Let's say it's sitting here. It's going to translate your private IP address, which now we call inside local from now on. And it will give you a, an inside global. It will strip out the or source, I, source IP address and stamp on it this global IP address and you go on the internet. And when you come back, it translates back. It removes the, um, the global address and gives you back your um, inside local, the private. So you translate back and forth. The problem, obviously, as you can see with NAT, is every time you want to go and access the internet, you have to wait. There is a delay before you get translated. And if there's a lot of packets coming out, the delay gets even more and more. So it is not suitable for any real-time communication, such as voice over IP or streaming videos. All right. Uh, some terminologies we should be familiar with before we move on. So please write this down. Inside local means private IP address is the source private IP address. Inside global is the source public IP address. The outside local is the destination public IP address and typically is the same as the outside global as well. All right, so these two really means the same thing. So just know from now on when I, when I say inside local, I mean the private IP addresses. And global IP addresses, I'm talking about the public ones that are given, that are placed on the router. All right. So that's that. So we just, you can write these down if you haven't, if you did not catch what I was just saying before. I wanted you to write those down, right? So, um, all right. So that's that. Let's look a look at types of NAT. There's a static NAT where it's one to one when you're doing the IP address. So static NAT is when you have one to one mapping. It's used for inside web servers, let's say, or, um, or any device in the inside that needs a permanent address to be translated. So if you have a web server right here and you need it, you always have the, uh, the same IP address. So you tell your router, 
I want the following IP, uh, private IP to always have a public one, same public to be translated, because otherwise it'll be changing just like the DHCP server. Okay, dynamic is when you have a pool of addresses, and um, what you do is when you come in with dynamic routing, it uses a pool of public IP addresses, I should say global from now on, uses a pool of global IP addresses and assign them on a first time, first serve basis. Okay, so you have a baby, you purchased 10, 20 global IP addresses. And when the guy comes in, when one packet comes in, I'll translate them, let them go out. Another guy, you go to the pool and grab. If you exhausted all the IP addresses in the pool, then no one will be able from the inside to go out on the internet. All right. Um, port address translation means there is a serial port right here that is has to be a global ip address to the outside world so what you do is when somebody sends an ip address i'm going to give them the serial my serial global ip address plus i'm going to attach to it the source port number that they're using to access so the address will look like this the ip address i'm sorry here here's the global address that i'm given the ip address plus the port number makes it a unique uh, socket it's called a socket right so if another guy comes in dot 11 with a different source port i'll give him the same address using his source port address a different socket so that's what pad does allows you to use one global ip address and by attaching the source port numbers of the incoming packets um this way you can not only conserve IP addresses, also conserve a lot of public IP addresses because you're only using one global IP. That's all you have to purchase from the service provider. And by the way, this is really what made NAT or IPv4 last for a long, long time because of this, because of PAT. All right, now, if for whatever reason, two guys are using the same port then the router will just increment and use a different port it doesn't have to be your source port exactly it will use your source port unless someone else doesn't but if someone else has it it'll just give you a different port that's all um so please take a snapshot of this to know the difference between NAT and pat okay write those down and now there are some layer four that do not use um, PAT. I'm sorry, do not use port numbers such as ICMP. So when that happens, ICMP query messages, echo request, you know, when you're paying and we reply, and excuse me, echo replies, it, they include a, a query ID, not ports. So ICMP v4 uses query IDs to identify the echo request with its corresponding echo reply. So um, you don't have to do that. So otherwise, the PAT will uh, make up their own type of um, port numbers for them. Okay. All right. So now let's take a look at, well, let's take a look at some advantages and disadvantages. The advantages of NAT, it conserves IP addresses. That's something you definitely should know about. That's, uh, and the other thing that, um, the other, the um, easy, this is what I really want you to write down, the advantages. Conserve, conserve global IP addresses, easy to change ISPs, and better security. Okay, those are the three most important things. You can write everything else you see here. But those are the three things. Conserves global IP addresses, easy to change ISPs, and better security because NAT hides the IPv4 addresses of users and each devices. The drawback, um, disadvantages of NAT, let me just go back for a second. The disadvantages of NAT is really it increases forwarding delays and it's harder to trace a host. Okay. All right. I'm going to stop right here. And on the next video, we'll talk about how to configure NAT and PAT. All right. So let's stop for now. Okay. Don't forget to um, write all the notes that I asked you to write. 
and upload them when we're all done. Okay, well, we're done for now. Okay, so don't forget to upload your notes, and I'll see you on the next video.